thousands of the physicians calling in from Europe, from US, from Asia, and across the globe. And it's truly our honor to invite the most uh, prestigious experts, Professor Lan San Zhong and his team to share the extraordinary experience on leading China to fight the coronavirus in the past few months today. And uh, now please allow me to introduce our honorable guests and the speakers of today's events. First is uh, Professor Lan Shan Zhong, academician of Chinese Ac uh, Academy of Engineering. Professor Tian Xing He, Director of Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health. Professor Shi Ye Li, Deputy Director of Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health. Professor Qing Hui Huang, Vice Director of Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health. Mr. Yi Hao Jiang, President and the CEO of GE Healthcare China. And all the way from Germany, we have Professor Matthias Goyen, Chief Medical Officer of GE Healthcare Europe, calling to join us. Welcome. Now, to open up today's section, I would like to invite Professor He and Mr. Yi Hao Jiang to give us an opening speech on behalf of the Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health and the GE Healthcare. Professor He, please. Okay, Professor Matthias. Um, yeah, I'm so nice to meet you and on the map. Um, this afternoon, uh, we're happy to uh, introduce our experience how to face the coronavirus COVID-19. Um, in our city, uh, from the January up to now, in the, our city, nearly 500 cases in our city. So, um, under the Professor Zhong, he is a leader. Um, we not just face to the, the patient in Guangzhou, and also face the, so, uh, a lot of patient in China. Um, also in uh, China, there are so many uh, different city, different uh, hospital. We have so many the data sent to our center to, to discuss and to analyze together. So. Uh, this time, we're happy with the GE company to, uh, and you to, to get together to discuss the coronavirus, how to face it, and how to uh, isolate the patient, how to deal with the patient, and how to treat the patient. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sir. Um, you have please? Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Professor, uh, Professor Chung, Professor Yi, Professor Huang, and uh, Professor. Um, here. Um, and then thank you for everyone online um, to join us today. Uh, we're in the middle of the public health crisis, uh, unlike the one we have never faced. Um, and this crisis is affecting everyone and uh, overwhelm our system and disrupt our economy. Um, I think this virus, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, really reminds us of the vital role our healthcare professionals uh, play in our society. We are forever grateful for the incredible work, passion, and resilience uh, you and uh, you have done for our society in this challenging situation. And it also reminds us the responsibility uh, for healthcare cooperation like GE Healthcare. Uh, we need to play in this. Um, as a global healthcare company, we're committed to supporting our customer, government, and the broad healthcare community in the fight against COVID-19. Today, it's our great pleasure to partner with the uh, Guangzhou Institute of Respiratory Health and, uh, and uh, for us and the Tencent to bring uh, the really most influential clinicians uh, uh, in China to share their experience in the fight against COVID-19 with the whole world. And really, we would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Zhong, Professor He, Professor Li, and Professor Huang and all the clinicians on this webinar. And it's really the call of our time to really work together and to build a community of shared health uh, for mankind. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thanks, Professor He and the House opening speech. Um, coronavirus has been growing into a global pandemic. There's a real need on open dialogue on latest uh, coronavirus development and the management experience across continent. 
Now, without further ado, let's invite China's most prestigious expert in this field, Professor Nan Shanzhong, to share his experience and uh, learnings on leading China to fight the coronavirus. Please. Take right. Over. So, Mr. Matis and uh, colleagues, everybody, good morning. So, uh, I think, uh, third, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the, the GE uh, company for organizing this kind of uh, webinar. And then we have the opportunity to uh, exchange some experience and even, even lesson for each other. So, uh, probably in, this, uh, in the next uh, few, uh, say, uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I just well, I would like to point out some uh, important points. So perhaps, I, can I have the slides, please? So very okay. So this is the today's data. So you can see globally that really a pandemic. Of, of the, this uh, COVID-19 infection. So all together, so more than 1,900,000 uh, 900, people been affected, infected with uh, more than 100, uh, one, uh, 127,000 people died with the mortality of 6.4%, quite high of the mortality. So this is the situation now. Nowadays, in in Europe as well as in the U.S., still going up. Uh, maybe going to the plateau, but I don't know. Maybe uh, in a few days, I hope so. Going to the plateau and going down. So this is the situation. Uh, I would like to mention some of the our work uh, been done in the last two months. So this is uh, uh, the, our strategy about the controlling further spreading at the beginning of the uh, January. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, since the, the day of 20th of January. So the uh, 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 executive committee of the expert come into going to Wuhan and then make some uh, investigation and uh, announce there is a definite human-to-human -human transmission. And the second may confirm that the medical staff have been infected. That's a very important fact uh, in this way. So since then, so we have to take uh, some action to that. So the uh, uh, very briefly, I would like to take, uh, to take this big, uh, picture that's from UK, so that the uh, epidemiologist mentioned about how to control uh, that how control measures should uh, can uh, reduce spread of virus in the United Kingdom. Now here is the um, action, so no action taken at all. And here, and this is uh, the, this uh, curve is uh, the national health uh, system. It's uh, the capacity and whether they can afford for this kind of outbreak. So people just try to reduce the the peak in under the curve under the the, the this uh, line. So uh, and then all of them can uh, afford of this outbreak. So the the measure is control measure, say like uh, self isolate, like uh, isolating if the patient is ill, and social distancing for vulnerable and whole household isolation if one member is ill. I think this is not that enough because that's highly contagious of this kind of COVID-19 infection. So even uh, by these uh, measures, I think in the UK, has not been a uh, complete uh, full. So that's why something happened. So actually in, uh, in China, we had also 
face this kind of problem? How we can, we can deal with this one? So actually now, how to make a delay and uh, suppress the uh, uh, outbreak, the peak? So there are two directions. Here, one is suppression, another one is so-called mitigation. So the suppression is a, is a very strong action by the government, central government, to inhibit the outbreak. Of course, by this way, we will cause a great impact of the economy here. So, that's, and uh, the leaders, President Xi had mentioned, so we should put the place at the safety and health in the first, or the life in the first, in the whole country. In other words, uh, no matter how much impact to the economy, that's the idea. Another way is the mitigation. Just try to get a delay action. So whether they can uh, uh, put the pick down to the level uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, national health system uh, capacity. But however, the, uh, the, because of the high reproductive number, say something like the, uh, reach uh, something like a three. So it's pretty high. So this delay, uh, whether we will be effective or not, so that's uh, a big question. So in China part of the central government, so just take uh, this, this director, suppression. So what kind of uh, action they have done? Uh, yeah, now uh, let's see. Yes, the so-called very intensive sub suppression strategy. So first of all, that's a, in 23rd, so lock down Wuhan. So that's a very strong action. Don't go to Wuhan and don't leave Wuhan. So the public should make it uh, more transparent. So uh, the governor announced all the cities, all the areas who have, should have real time, real time announcement of the number of diagnosis uh, uh, patients every day in each city nationwide. And the third is the so-called interagency mechanism. In other words, I can interpret it as the so-called uh, early self-protection, the distancing, the goal of that. Early detection, early diagnosis, that's the very early uh, stage. The big hospital can make a diagnosis rather than going to the CDC to make a diagnosis, final diagnosis and early isolation, of course. That, uh, that policy is down to the community level. So that's a very important point. And then the RT-PCR checkup in all close contact, including those without symptoms. So this is some action. This is actually started in Wuhan. That's a 23rd uh, January. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. But what happens then? You can see this is a uh, uh, 21st in uh, January. So actually, the new diagnosis knows, uh, diagnosis, the number is increasing. So reaching the peak two weeks later, and after two weeks, is actually the new diagnosis. The number is going down here. So after another two weeks altogether, one month really going down. So just think, uh, talk about one month to come basically control the uh, uh, outbreak of this. So you can see nowadays in, uh, in the world, and it, this is in China. So, so after that, there's some other countries, in particular in Europe, as well in the in United States, start this uh, uh, so delay action in the beginning of, uh, of March, of course. So just before that, uh, at, uh, a lot of countries, a lot of uh, uh, they had not the action for that, but actually had not been under control. So after four, uh, four weeks and five weeks, still going up. Now this is some uh, from Spain, Germany, France, Italy, and some Iran and so on. Seems to be increasing, but now seems to be keeping in plateau. But the only exception is in the United States. I think uh, uh, that's two points. The first point, I think in the United States, they have made a great survey. I think that's good to find out some uh, patient in fact with uh, COVID-19. But in other words, the uh, uh, diagnosis pay, uh, number is pretty high. 
So up to close to 600,000. That's, that's the number. But it seems to be still going up. So in other words, the control policy, the control action is not that strong. So this is the situation. So I should say by this way, in China, actually in early in Wuhan, that actually is out of, out of uh, control in that time. But uh, so quickly, so the, uh, the government take the action and also pro, uh, so block Wuhan and also to uh, the other part of the China will just just uh, take um, the four early strategy. So that curve is going to be here. So that's one month. And I think in uh, in Europe uh, now, I suppose Europe will be going to the plateau. So I don't know what will be happening. So in the in the U.S. later on, perhaps in a, another one week or when, uh, It depends on what kind of action you have, you 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 have taken. So this is first things that maybe this is the first way. I think the second way is we have more challenge, including China. So how can we make a balance in between the uh, control uh, and economic development? So actually we have lost a lot of uh, GDP and uh, have a big loss of uh, in terms of economy, but we cannot uh, maintain this so continuously. How could, how could we move the balance between them? So that's a big problem facing China, that facing is facing. The second point would be transmission road. So transmission road, it is definitely, there are two roads. One is the corporate. Corporate transmission, so usually it will be uh, within two meters, we'll have the corporate transmission, definitely, definitely transmission. And the second will be close contact. From each other. That's true. We will definitely, yes. And the others, maybe something like uh, mother to chart virtual, uh, vertical transmission, that's no evidence showing that. So in our data. And also whether there's a transmission from the species as urine, because we had already cultured the uh, uh, alive virus from, from feces and urine. And whether they, they are another uh, role from feces uh, to respiratory tract and then to cause the infection. So it's, uh, it's possible. So this is uh, the, we, we have culture of the, uh, the alive virus. So in the feces and urine. And this is some example. So you, you, you can see in Hong Kong. So uh, 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 the same real. And here, so one was the uh, infected. Another third more, and in fact, as well. So that must be some owing to some leakage of the sewer and exhausted pipe. So that's may, maybe the mechanism. In particular, like an uh, outbreak in Diamond Princess Cruise. So it, as you know, so more than <coughs> uh, 3,000 uh, passengers uh, in, in, in board. So eventually, that's close to 1,000. Been affected, so that's not because of face-to-face, -face, uh, uh, so talking and then get uh, infected. Maybe co uh, via the uh, uh, close uh, pipe or sewer, and then to get infected. So the core of control transmission, I suppose, for our European colleagues, I, I suppose now they you have a. Uh, uh, promote the the, uh, the, <coughs> the role. The one is keep distance. I think that's one call. And the second was wear mask. I think that's a big argument about uh, wear mask. But actually, wear mask is useful. Uh, somebody said wear mask maybe that's to prevent you uh, from transmission to others. But in China, the, 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 the notion is the other part. Wear mask is prevent the others to transmit to you. So this is a different idea. Actually, it's true. So because the majority of the virus is not free in the air, that's the, it, the heat in the droplets. So the, uh, the, the during cough and uh, the droplets is not uh, uh, going so, so far, too far, something like uh, one to two meters. 
so the, the, the breast, the mask can protect that. So the third point, I would like to mention transmission by import patient because in China, we have been facing this point, this point, because in China, we are basically under control without more uh, than uh, more people being infected. Uh, actually, at the moment, quite a big number, probably close to 1,000. So infected from by the foreign imports of people. So in particular, those who are asymptomatic patients with the COVID-19 infection. So probably we should pay more attention to the asymptomatic patient because uh, uh, from our data showing incubation period, maybe three, the majority would be three to seven days. So the maximum may be 14 days. So in fact, during this in, in incubation time, there's no um, symptom uh, in this patient, or perhaps the symptom very mild. The patient does not care about that. In, in particular, from our data being show, about 50% of the patient had no fever, so a fever. So fever is not the first symptom appear. So something like uh, fatigue or cough, that's the first symptoms. So in particular, so we, we need to pay attention to, to those people who are close contact with the uh, infected patient. And the second is those who are just came back from the outbreak communities. These two uh, a group of patients, we should give some check up to those that in, to, in order to avoid further transmission. So this is. Uh, oh, the one of the uh, evidence showing that's the onset of the uh, of the <coughs> of COVID nineteen. So this is uh, the. Oh, this is a uh, throat. Uh, this nas nasal uh, nasal swab. This is throat swab. So also that's higher virus load in the upper airway. So in the first in the first five days of the onset, after five days, perhaps after one week, the virus load is pretty low, lower down. So the infectivity will be decreasing. So in the very early uh, onset, and as well as the asymptomatic period. That's very high contagious. People should be very much aware about that. So, as you know, we use usually we use basic reproductive number to show that how 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 high is the infectivity. So, as you make a comparison, SARS as usually is two, one to two, one person infect two patients, and then the MERS less than one. A seasonal influenza 1.5, but uh, uh, the majority of the data showing so close uh, COVID 19 close to three or even four or five in some of the countries. That means that's uh, very contagious. So the so the prevention of the uh, infection is pretty important. And then so very quickly, I just uh, I just uh, introduce some of the. Uh, Randomized as a control study. Actually, it's not randomized. Open control study because everybody, uh, so all the country are facing a new disease. Nobody knows how to treat them. So there's no effective uh, drugs available for this kind of target treatment. So this, we have been trying some of them, like this one we call the Calitra, which is introduced. And since the outbreak of SARS 17 years ago. So chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, an IR-6 receptor antibody. So uh, so that's uh, dealing with the cytokine storm. This is Chinese herb, like the Lianhua Qingwen capsule, and also hydrogen oxygen mixed gas inhalation, which is uh, very simple and be used like a uh, oxygen inhalation. And remdesivir and uh, remdesivir have, have been showing some uh, efficacy of that. So first of all, the Calitra. So after a, random, a randomized uh, control study, that's the first study in Wuhan, and uh, uh, based on the time for clinical improvement. 
So you can see, uh, so the, the treatment group and the control group shows no difference in shortening the duration of clinical improvement. And also it shows no difference in the significant uh, reduced the virus load. That's a Kalitra seems to be disappointed of this one. That second one, so we have done, so will be published soon. So clinical application of Corcrin. So we, uh, from the laboratory test, so by using uh, 500 milligrams twice a day, that means uh, for 10 days. So now we change because of the toxic, uh, some uh, adverse effect, we use uh, five milligram, 500 milligrams uh, twice a day for two days, and the other eight days, just five milligrams, uh, 500 milligrams in uh, close to 200 pa uh, patients in 10 uh, hospitals. So the plasma concentrations up to one to 1.5, I think this is enough uh, to, to, to kill the, the uh, uh, COVID-19 virus because the EC50 is quite close to that. So EC50 is only 1.13 micromole per liter. So this is, we have also found the target proteins, three CL4 protein for COVID-19. So this is the result because it's not published yet. So I just show you some of the results rather than show you some picture. So the patient received a core cream, so have a shortened time as compared to control, three days versus nine days. And then by, uh, by the day of, and of these 14, a higher proportion of patients with virus uh, turn into negative. So, and also the fever significant shorter in chloroquine uh, group. And this is a, another study. I think this is only 20 patients. So I, I suppose you have seen that. So in the, uh, by so our friends, colleagues, six mili 600 milligrams hydroxychloroquine daily. So, uh, so 200 milligrams, uh, three times a day for 10 days. And virus load have been uh, in the nasal pharyngeal swabs have been checked every day. So depending on their clinical presentation, six patients have received as is rising. So uh, uh, for two, five mili 500 milligrams first day, and then 250 milligrams, uh, the two to five fifth days. And this is the result with the, uh, the virus uh, turning to negative over time here. So you can see this is a uh, control group. And this is a chloroquine group here, chloroquine group. And this is a chloroquine plus azithromycin. Seems to be quite beautiful, but I suppose it is uh, less convincing. Still have no so solid evidence showing that uh, that's as effective very effective of this. So that's why so some of the country has studied a mass control study looking at the hydroxin chloroquine plus and this reminds whether it is really working or not. So this is some Chinese herb. We have been using this one to be called the uh uh Jiao Lang L LHQ B. So this kind uh, uh, in the laboratory work. So we have did the antivirus activity and anti-information activity in P3 uh, lab and show that this had a weak antivirus activity. However, it, it did show a very strong anti-information activity. And then we have uh, carried uh, carry our study. So clinical trial for this kind of Chinese service. So, so close to 200, patients, one when with onion one, and then the result is showing high overall recovery in the treatment group as compared to control. So, and also faster symptom recovery, so as compared with the uh, control, and higher rate of uh, CT uh, improvement, and as compared with the control. However, there's no significant difference or in conversion rate of severe case or the viral, viral conversion time uh, in between two groups. So maybe this kind of Chinese herb will be effective in mild and non-CPN COVID-19 patients.
and then uh, convalescence plasma second, which is really so effective. There are two papers. One is uh, in open, this is an open study published in JAMA, and five critical EU patients, and then with ARDS, of course, and then donor. So convalescence plasma must uh, match this criteria with specific antibody binding for one in 1,000. And the second is a neutralization titer with more than 50, uh, 40. So the, uh, just one dose, 400 mils. So you can see, just very briefly, you can see the result. Uh, here is uh, circulation time. The higher the circulation time, the lower the virus load. You can see the virus loads going down. And the second is uh, the, the severity of the disease going down so far called score. And then this oxygenation going up and temperatures going down. And this is just so. That's another uh, paper published in PNAS. Uh, also, the open study, recover donors, that's uh, a little bit different from the, the last one. And then 10 patients received two times of 200 mils of convalescent plasma. And then uh, and look, just look at the result. I, I suppose I just show you one of these. The serum, in terms of serum neutralization, uh, antibody is, is, uh, is very, uh, majority very much improved. And also the serum virus, uh, virus load, so this is uh, some still, you know, it's not weak, possibly. And the majority of them after uh, infusion of convalescence uh, plasma also negative. So the last one will be hydrogen oxygen mixed gas. Will be, will be. Actually, this is some uh, study, actually helium and oxygen mixed gas. And uh, 20, uh, 30 years ago, it used to treat the patient with deep sleep. So sort of break. So we use the hydrogen oxygen mixed gas because we just use a simple uh, equipment. We can change the, uh, the water into hydrogen and oxygen because the mixed gas, the hydrogen, the molecular weight is pretty the lowest as compared with nitrogen. So that's why the patient can relieve this uh, deep sleep and then pre prevent those patients from deterioration into critical ill. So the data will be coming out uh, the next uh, few, uh, I think uh, next week. So, so finally, I would like to mention about, so we would be happy to cooperate with GE and some other company. So the research of big database, big data analysis of the background of COVID-19, in fact, positive uh, subject that will be, uh, will be carried on in, uh, now have been carried on in the United States, but we are doing this one, so immediately with one to two million so people. And the second will be a database or bio biological resources platform for respiratory disease, a dynamic pulmonary function model of respiratory disease. And, uh, and also this is, a, we have published primary data of clinical characteristics of coronavirus disease. Uh, so in China, now we've uh, complete another data. So because when we collect this data of 1,099 patients, that's only in admission, uh, during admission. Now we know all that, what happens in this kind of patient. So we we'll give another summary of this time. And then the, about AI, artificial intelligence. So, so make a prediction model for risk of COVID-19 in critical ill pay based on AI, and then CD-based diagnosis AI model for this COVID-19, and CD-based AI diagnosis model for pulmonary nodules, which is uh, in GE, have been already done this for a long time, and AI diagnosis model based on OCT image, the so-called OCT optimal coherence tomography, and also the uh, pulmonary diffusion capacity, this lung function, and the image, how to match the image model based on AI. This is also we are planning to do. Well, thank you very much. And then we have to think about one world and one fight. Thank you.
Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for Professor Zong. It's very insightful sharing and it's truly actually intrigued us thinking when is the right timing to intervene the, you know, the uh, COVID-19 and uh, how to do it. And so thanks uh, Professor Zong again. And the next, let's move on to our next topic. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, we have a question in section. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, is there any, uh, Matthias? Hello, Matthias. So we are moving um, the questions um, towards the end of the session. Is that right? When we're having the Q&A section? Uh, yes, but if you have any questions, you can through the next one. Yeah, keep going. Okay, good point. Okay, sure. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, actually, we have a lot of questions on the line, but we probably will lead it to the end of the section, so we didn't have the uh, Q&A sections. Okay. Um, so the next topic, uh, we have uh, actually Professor He for you. Uh, so Professor He is going to share with us, you know, uh, the how artificial intelligence can help the uh, COVID-19 diagnosis. Um, and also he will be uh, sharing his opinion about even in the future, how artificial intelligence can shape the technology trend. Please, Professor Zhou. Okay, just now, Professor Zhou is already uh, introduced the, 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 the whole uh, situation about the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. And now I will do some, uh, just like this picture, article. Um, professor just now introduced uh, about uh, in the beginning of the uh, in China, the, the, the patients uh, 2099, they face about the uh, micro capacity. Maybe later we uh, have another research uh, about more and more the Chinese patients about the uh, finally the uh, micro capacity. Um, we had another research about the uh, co mobility about its burden. And how about the coronavirus patient? If the patient has another uh, another complication, if the, the patient, like the old patient, the more the complication, uh, and maybe the patient is easy to get uh, into the critical illness. And the slide is the, the curve. And if the patient know the the morbid morbidity and maybe the, the lower danger, like more the the the, the morbidity and give the patient more danger. And our research focus on the the humor and the COPD and other. Yeah, this is another paper about the uh, about the tumor patient. So for the take the, the tumor patient, and um, because the patient, most patient that uh, the anxiety is lower, uh, maybe some patient have set the radiotherapy, and maybe have set the chemotherapy, so the patient is more in, easy to get you know, danger. So we have another research and how to use the AI to predict the model for the rest of the critical illness. Now, so more and more the patient is after the COVID-19, and I think we know maybe more than 80% is, is the slide. And how about another 20%? And we know that uh, the 6.5% of the case were developed into a critical illness, and the mortality is higher, nearly 30%. And so we use our model to keep what type of patient the easy to do the critical illness. So we use the, the training, the, the, the method, the training the 1,590 case. And use another the more than the one such case to validation this training model. And so we use the model and we use a uh, normal brand to predict. And we will be very, very simple to predict the model uh, on the 
is on the our country, the WeChat. It's really easy to use a piece of a simple model to compete the patient. Um, how about the situation? Easy to do the critical illness. And we use the plan key risk factor to simply to, to calculate how about the patient situation. So this model um, is very good and the AUC is uh, nearly the 0 0.91. So we let the COVID-19 patient to separate two groups. And one group is the high risk. Another is the lower or maybe the minor to progress into the, the critical illness. So this simple predictor model we we uh, very easy track it in the uh, in other WeChat the, the, the website we use it. Another we use the CT scan to diagnose the AI model for the COVID nineteen. The background is the in just in the beginning of COVID nineteen, not so many play they have the. the uh, PCR uh, RNA to, to check the patient. Um, we, we use the CT to, 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 to check the patient and to estimate how about the patient, the diagnosis, and different difference rate, and how about the patient uh, recovery. So, just like this, the different uh, the CT scan, like bacteria, pneumonia, and the virus. Pneumonia, COVID nineteen, and just look uh, from uh, the 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 this is to look uh, maybe just like the the virus pneumonia and COVID nineteen is very similar. So we use the, the the AI the model to to treat the the the, 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 the machine and and the use the machine and we just like the, the, the why does pneumonia and other the AUC is 0 0.97? And COVID-19 and another virus pneumonia, the AUC reached uh, 0 0.93. So the so we also use the 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 treatment, the radiologist the read the, the, the CT scan. And we see the sensitive and the specialist for the senior the, the, the urologist, the, the AUC is uh, 0.86, another is similar. But for the AI, uh, the AUC is 2.92 to the totally to the 2.86. So this CT scan, not just use CT only, and maybe we provide the CT scan with the uh, clinical camera uh, the rest together, and we you uh, let the, the, the AI diagnosis the ACE from the 2.94 to the 95. So we also use the, 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 this AI to estimate how about the, the, the quality of the lesson. From this quality lesson, we can estimate how about the patient diagnosis and how about the patient and uh, uh, recovery, the, the, how fast the, the recovery. So we did research and by our, our team, uh, Tencent, um, AI doctor together. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, <laughs> Professor. So I think that's a very because AI has been a very hot topic in this uh, in this field. I think there will be a lot of learning and exchange of information cross continent as well. And the thanks to Professor Hu again. And uh, next, we're moving into our next speaker, who is uh, Professor Li. Uh, Professor Li is going to share with us his uh, his uh, speech about. Uh, the personal prote protective equipment for the healthcare professionals during the virus outbreak. We live a lot of in affiliation from, especially from Europe, are facing these challenges right now. Uh, please, Professor. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, thanks. And hi, everyone. Uh, my talk is uh, Personal Protective Equipment, PPE, for the health uh, class workers. Uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, data is from the newspaper or some of the other uh, news agency. Uh, it's uh, the 15 April, uh, and the number of the infected health workers in China uh, at the early stage of the uh, pandemic. Uh, pandemic uh, there are uh, more than 3,000 health workers were infected and 22 died at the early stage. But uh, uh, after that, uh, after uh, February uh, 17th, there are no uh, health workers were infected uh, among the more than uh, 42,000 health workers in, in Wuhan. Also, when you see that in, uh, uh, based on the, uh, the report, uh, we spent more than uh, uh, 20,000 infected uh, uh, health workers infected uh, with uh, 120 days. Also, a similar uh, uh, data uh, you can see here in Germany, also in, in the state, uh, in the states, more than 9,000 health workers was infected. Infected. So, uh, so uh, the personal infect, uh, uh, PPE is very important for the uh, medical uh, uh, for the health care workers. Yes, the a guideline. Uh, for the uh, health workers, uh, how to deal with the, uh, the medical procedure in, uh, uh, by the uh, WHO. So, uh, based on this uh, guideline, we can see uh, for the health worker performing uh, for performing the aerosol gen uh, generate pin procedure, uh, the uh, appropriate PPE should be very. It's the most important procedure in the, the different uh, equipment uh, item, different uh, item. And so, uh, when you see the, uh, in, all, uh, uh, in addition to the uh, PPE, uh, also the loom, the uh, ventilated loom is, is also uh, uh, required, required. And also the personnel, the limit number uh, or li uh, limit uh, Person is, is also another important procedure for the uh, procedure. So here's the uh, item required uh, based on the uh, WHO guideline. A different procedure requires a different item, like the mask or the uh, resp uh, resp uh, uh, respirator, resp uh, respirator or the door or something like that. Uh, in uh, uh, in China, we also have a, uh, based on our uh, national uh, health commission, we also have the uh, guideline for the for, uh, for, uh, for the working with the COVID nine for the patient with the COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, the item include the breathing protection, eye uh, eye face protection item, also another uh, trunk or lip protection item. Hands or feet protection. Uh, the procedure is very important uh, for for the medical uh, for the health care workers. It's, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, essential to uh, to get the uh, to get the permit uh, before you uh, receive the this training procedure, like the uh, how to. Uh, uh, put on the, the masking, the procedure for the masking, or the wedding procedure, or the take-off procedure, something like that. Mm. And also, they are based on the uh, guideline of our uh, national uh, health commission. We have the uh, three different uh, yeah, different grade for different procedure. Uh, grade one is the standard procedure. Uh, the item for the, the cap. Or mask, of course, and is uh, capable to the general medical team. Uh, for the great, great tool, is enhanced protection. The item for the, uh, the mask, N95 mask, is a capable, capable, capable for the 
make those stuff in the close uh, contact with the patient of the COVID-19. And uh, the third uh, the grade is the, uh, uh, based on the grade two, it also require the full respiratory or uh, positive pressure tank cover. Is, uh, is, uh, is suitable to the very high risk procedure like the incubation or tracheotherapy <laughs> or bronchoscopy. Uh, so, uh, here's the uh, high risk uh, procedure I report that uh, uh, is the reprint. Uh, this uh, uh, study was, uh, done, uh, was done in Shenzhen, China. Uh, we it, uh, go to the uh, uh, important point that here we can see uh, the different uh, uh, different uh, uh, different sample type. Here we can see the swab swab or the nasal swab a sputum or a bar. You can see uh, for the uh, 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 for the severe patient for this group the bar by the I the positive uh, rate is uh, is the most high for the bar. So here we can see that for the uh, uh, bar is the most sensitive example. Another uh, study is also just in another study is just by uh, drama. We also saw that uh, based on the different example. Uh, uh, bath is the most uh, highest uh, yeah for the INA test. So here's the our the table, uh, clinical uh, uh, practice uh, is the based on the uh, grade three uh, uh, PPE you can uh, fit the uh, lavage so it's for the treatment after three times the uh, a bar, a bar, the uh, the H was improved. And another uh, basis is showing the for uh, the uh, secretion. Uh, the sputum was uh, blocked in the uh, left major bronchus after bronchoscopy, and such after uh, secretion. So the X-ray uh, was uh, X-ray shows uh, improved really. Severe, really obviously. Uh, this study was uh, is uh, 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 in the Chinese uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, respiratory disease. Uh, he uh, studied the uh, uh, twelve cases with uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, this uh, 12, uh, 12 cases was successfully under the guidance of uh, the Haskell team. Uh, all the uh, health workers were protected under the PPE with the positive pressure protected food. Uh, the procedure is very useful. It's a two or three minutes, no complications. And the study showed that no uh, infective for the nice, uh, nice health workers to evolve uh, this integration. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Professor Lee, and uh, thanks to all three professors for your excellent uh, sharing. And I know, uh, you know, we're a little bit overrun, but if you don't mind, because I think of my colleague Matthias, he's actually looking at the screen and taking uh, questions from our, you know, European colleagues. So probably we can hand over to Matthias for the Q&A section. Matthias, all over to you. Yeah, thanks a lot to our, um, my name is Matthias Gurian. I'm G Healthcare's Chief Medical Officer for Europe. And first of all, I would like to thank you so much, Professor Zhang, Professor He, and Professor Li for sharing the Chinese perspective on the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the really great insights. Let me quickly give you some context regarding the situation over here in Europe. All countries in Europe have confirmed COVID-19 cases, with Italy, Spain, and France being hit the worst by the coronavirus. Every second COVID-19 case globally occurs in Europe, and two out of three patients who died due to COVID-19 globally die in Europe. 
We don't follow a su suppression strategy, but we have all learned about the value of social distancing. And, and if we don't belong to the critical workforce, we are smart, we better stay home. We help flatten the curve, as you had mentioned, Professor Jong, and thereby save lives. So the audience on this webcast right now consists of intensive care doctors, radiologists, anesthesiologists, ICU nurses, but also GPs and doctors from other specialties, and also hospital administrators, as well as colleagues from Medtech and Pharma. I saw a lot of questions coming in online during your presentations, and the participants also had the opportunity to ask questions in advance. And we would be really honored if you gave us like 10 more minutes so we can discuss at least the top questions. So if I may, I would directly go to the first question here that several participants have asked. In our discussions in Europe, we mainly focus on the involvement of the lungs in patients with COVID-19, but there are reports out that show that COVID-19 can also affect the heart and the brain. Can you confirm those observations in your patient cohort, I would say, and how do those manifestations are they rather rare or is this a pretty common finding? What what can you tell us? What to Well, I, I suppose uh, we are not we're very aware about the the heart and circulation and also the uh, the brain is very much uh, very much involved, including the autopsy. So uh, the heart uh, it, it didn't show that uh, troponin or some other enzymes really increased. I think that's uh, really uh, related to the uh, comorbidity of the, those patients who have underlying disease, so some cardiovascular disease. Uh, during our check with the ultrasound and EKG from time to time, so I think it's comorbidity. It's not uh, really involved of the <clears throat> and also during the autopsy, we didn't find that. But one point we would like to add, uh, to, to mention about the kidney. I think the kidney, it, it really shows some uh, uh, renal turbulent uh, tubules. So it uh, is a remove of this, uh, of this. It's a necrosis during autopsy. And also we have uh, some of the groups have found something like uh, four, one fourth, uh, 25 to 30% of patients that the, the, the kidney is very much involved. So this is uh, what we have. Uh, so in the, at the moment, so from the from central nervous system and that is not that uh, apparent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, another um, cluster of questions, I would say, circles around the medical technology used in the patient COVID-19 pathway. What are some of the technologies that, that you believe are most promising in the fight against COVID-19? And especially a couple of um, people asked, how do you see the role of uh, ultrasound in COVID-19 patients? Yeah, ultrasound, so some of the uh, study has shown just uh, ultrasound can make a prediction whether this patient is in, a, in what kind of status. So the moderate or serious and critical ill. So I, we have not uh, this experience, so not, not yet. But uh, 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 your question is not only limited in this uh, ultrasound and some, any other. So, so whether you have uh, met, whether it, your question has involved for the, what kind of uh, management will be available, is that right? Right. I mean, ultrasound might not seem an obvious weapon against COVID-19, but it's often the image modality that is most re readily available, right, compared of, to CT. Of course. Because at point of care, it's safe, there is no radiation, it's low cost. But please talk about CT, if you like, I mean, for initial diagnosis. Well, to initial diagnosis, uh, it definitely is necessary. But I, I don't think uh, it will depend on the, on the CT scan, because in a quite a few number of the, the patients in the so-called, we call the mild disease, in, in particular in, uh, in Chinese, uh, not actually guideline, but uh, it shows a, a, a small percentage that's no any abnormality in routine CT scan. And that this shows some infection. And then the symptoms and uh, PCR positive. And then this is what we would like to show uh, to, to think about GE can do something. 
I mean, the early detection of uh, this kind of disease, because in the early stage, sometimes there's no, no apparent abnormality in this kind. So this is something I think in the CD scan, we need to do more research about that. density or some uh, make it more accurate, accurate or precisely and then find it in the early stage. It's really important. But anyway, it shows some of the patient it, uh, from the whole process, there's no any so abnormality of the CT scans. Actually, he recovered. That's a very mild kind, mild disease of these patients. Right. And I have another question that several participants asked. How do you see um, um, the backlog of cancer patients and stroke patients. I read an article the other day. Basically, the author was asking, where are all the heart attacks? Because people might be afraid to show up in a hospital with stroke or heart attack because they fear catching COVID-19. Have you see, also seen that in China, that patients are afraid and don't want to get treatment for other reasons? Yes, that's true. Yes. In particular, in some of the patients who had got a heart failure or some uh, uh, cancer and so on. So uh, just now, Professor He had mentioned. So in particular, we had made some analysis of lung cancer, right? Lung cancer is pretty high. I mean, the, uh, the mortality is pretty high. Actually, this, those patients, they are afraid of going to the hospital. And then uh, until the, uh, the disease is getting really severe, and then it's too late for them to uh, to keep uh, to receive uh, any available uh, treatment. Yes, we have the same problem. Any any suggestions on how we could solve that? Is it like teaching those patients? Okay, uh, the likelihood of um, attracting COVID is, is 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 really limited. Please get your treatment that you need. Do you have any recommendations? Because it seems to be a huge problem in Europe and the US. Yes, that's right. But uh, as you know, the, in this time in, Ch in China, I think the majority of the patients, uh, they, they receive uh, all the treatment as a, as a, uh, as a free, free of charge. Mm -hmm. right? So the, that's a big uh, it's a advantage of that. So the, the patients, uh, when they feel got ill now, so all of them will go to, to the hospital, in particular those with a very severe comorbidity. They, they, have no, they are not worried about the medical expense. So that's a, another a important part of that. Right, I see. Just seeing another couple of questions that circle around the, the interest in antibody testing in coronavirus. And uh, in Europe, we are preparing to start, you know, testing to find out who already has had um, you know, the coronavirus and the test will look for antibodies in the blood. So my question is, How much antibody testing has China carried out, and what do you think is the value of these tests? Well, you, uh, you mean antibody, antibody tests for the diagnosis or for the... Uh... No, not for diagnosis, antibody to see if you already had, you know, contact, if you already have had oh, yes. COVID-19. Oh, yes, of course. So that's IgG and IgM have already uh, been popularized in, inside China. So we are going to have a checkup of the, the screening. So both uh, uh, so uh, PCR as well as plus, I mean, double check of the patient of an, uh, antibody, serum antibody, uh, in particular in those who have uh, some uh, still post PCR positive clinic that recover from the disease. But if they, sh they are sh showing the uh, very strong uh, serum uh, uh, IgG, Uh, very high titer. I think these patients uh, already had resistance, resistance. So they, it's not uh, definitely have, will not have this opportunity of re reinfection. No. So that's a uh, useful. Right. Thank you. So before I hand back back to War, I, I have a question from my side. What were you? three key learnings in China, which you think should be implemented in other regions like over here in Europe, as we continue to respond to the COVID-19. Is there anything you'd say we'd especially need to take care of? Okay. 
You're you're on mute. At least I cannot hear you. Well, uh, I suppose could you could you repeat the, your questions? I, I oh, sure, sure, sure. What were your three key learnings in China, which you think you know would be implemented could be implemented you know in other regions like over here in Europe? And um, as we continue to respond to the COVID nineteen, is there anything you you'd say would especially need to take care of? Well, I think the most uh, successful uh, experience maybe so the upper stream strategy for the, the, the prevention. So this is most uh, important things. I think uh, the once the patient uh, the, the patient got infected, so that's very important for China to follow up their uh, close contacts. So that's very important because just now I have shown you the uh, the so-called uh, control measures in the UK, and that's once uh, if one uh, in ill, uh, he will be uh, stayed at home. Well, what happens in his uh, uh, her uh, relatives or her families? I think in China, so all of them will receive them follow up uh, uh, checkup. So that's the uh, most important to reduce further. Uh, infection. That's I think that's most successful. That in other words, that's a uh, uh, dancing, uh, ban, uh, distancing, or so where where mask is going down to the community level, to the home. So that's that's a I think a pretty important. So even now it's under control for more than one month, but people still uh, just like that. Of course, we have uh, another question. So how do Getting back to go to go to the school and uh, have some classes and then uh, work, uh, uh, recover our or the uh, routine working. That's an, a big uh, new challenge. But actually, we are going immediately. Uh, let's graduate. So for this time. So again, thank you very much, Professor Zhang, Professor Her, Professor Lee. Now back to you. I know there are many Chinese doctors on this webcast as well, and they also might have a question. Okay. Um, in fact, thanks, because we have a lot of the you know the, the Chinese audience as well. So we do um, uh, we do trying to want to you know ask some you know questions for, to Professor Zhou on behalf of our Chinese audience. One of the questions which is most commonly being asked um, is. Uh, when the protection, um, you know, during the, or will the protection during the COVID-19 will continue afterwards? Or, uh, or is there any signal you will suggest uh, will be the time point for the majority or community to um, lower the level of protection, like not wear that mask? Well, I or? think, uh, yeah, this is a, a question I always keep in my, uh, in my mind. So uh, in Chinese situation at the moment, or oh, actually, we can uh, so we can uh, uh, get get rid of this the mask at the moment. However, we have a big problem with the big difference in between China and outside China. In particular, in Europe, I, I hope in Europe we will be uh, going to the plateau. In particular, in some of the countries like Spain, uh, like Italy and France, and uh, of course UK and some others. So to the plateau and then going down because all of those countries have strengthened their measures to, to, you know, to limit the people. So go like go joining together and some other. It shows uh, that uh, some effect, efficacy of that to prevent that. So this is why. So that's why so we are facing some of the uh, big problem of import patients. So the, we had actually have happened now in the border of Russia and China, and also some other places, we have a, a lot of uh, people uh, coming uh, uh, coming into China and get uh, and have, uh, actually they are infected. So we transfer to uh, uh, to the others. That's a big problem for us. Uh, thanks, Professor Zhong. I think we are actually it's actually overrun of our today's uh, events. Um, Professor John, would you like to give us some um, closing uh, remarks of the today's event? Well, I uh, once again, I do hope. I mean, in Europe, I I I, I can I can see the, the 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 future, the near future. 
it seems to me it's going to the plateau. And then in some of the countries in particular. So I hope, so if we can keep going on, not really in a hurry to recover all the work. And then also as I, every, all the country had this problem. So economy, if stop economy developing, so that will, will cause a big problem of instability of the society. But anyway, the, the, the human's life is the first. So we have to do the, uh, our best to keep uh, people alive, healthy, and then think about the the, uh, the economy. Mm -hmm. So that's our strategy about it. So I suppose in in Europe, some of the countries and the leaders they have they are aware of this. Mm -hmm. So that's why they strengthen the, the the action of this. Mm -hmm. I hope it will success. It will be successful. So I do hope in the not not only time, say like just one week. And then going down. So everybody will be happy to see this uh, with, uh, the future. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Professor Zhong, and thanks everyone on the line. And uh, let's keep our dialogue open and uh, work together to fight this uh, global pandemic. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.